Nobody in this bar has any balls. Let me give you some balls. Here's some balls, Susie. Get some balls. Here, I stuck up for you guys. Get some balls. Because you know what? Mike. I'm done with this. Mike. I can't talk to him right now. Oh, is he gone? I don't know. Michael is gone, and I can't even begin to rescue this bar. Hey, guys. Hello. Hey. I wanted to create a great one-of-a-kind bar you'd be excited about. I determine what do I do with the brand. When people say that there's an owner who is a <laughs> that's a liability. When they tell me that they can't get good drinks, and also that a husband and wife are fighting, or they saw a social media page that turned them off, the fact of the matter is, the I'm Brixton stop brand. Stop right there, John. I know where you're getting at. We're not changing the name. The name, the Brixton. I came here as a customer when my friend opened it. So what? And, and now it's I own the place. Money. I bought it from a friend. This name has meaning, it has value. That's emotional, and candidly, it's childish. When are you gonna be a businessman, Tim? This is my bar. This is the Brixton, and it was here before me, and I'm proud. I'm proud to have the Brixton. It's a part of East Austin. You opened this brand, you never remodeled. You never had a grand opening. A year and a half later, you did not make it successful. Guys, listen to me, fresh beginning. Packed bar day one, right experience, new brand. Doesn't it make sense? Yeah, I get it. Let's take it the full 100%. But why can't we do it with the same sign out front? Why can't we because do it? Because you did that last time. You're not making money, guys. You told me, Sarah, if the Brixton fails, your marriage probably fails. I say, let's give it a shot. I'm obviously outnumbered. You've been outnumbered about everything. They've all told you these things again and again and again. It does piss me off that he thinks, just throw it away. First step is, we're gonna paint over that sign. That's why those rollers are there. And I want you to be the first one to do it. Do it. Hold it. There's a nice middle finger right there. Are you joking me, Tim? This is what you wanted. Me, Tim. This is what you want me to do. Together. I've dealt with a lot of owners in my life, but he's about as hard-headed and opinionated as it gets. That's not fair to it's us. It's not what I want, it's what you want. I just don't want you to be a dick about it. Listen to me, Sarah. You need to take your husband aside and talk to him and see if he can be a man, not a little boy. Whatever. <laughs> this. I feel like that was about a line. I'm already there. I'm already mentally ready to change the name, to commit, doing something different, bring more people in. That just took it to another level. Babe! I feel like everybody turned on me. Everybody else just gets to go, yeah, let's do it, because they're going to make a whole bunch more in tips. But they don't have to do anything. All they have to do is show up, clock in, serve drinks, smile at people, be done. I feel like I'm making all the sacrifices. Tim, Alyssa's crying. I'm livid that you're ignoring me right now. I'm not gonna sit there and let him yell at me. Guys, I am trying to convince him in a logical and practical way, you know that. I'm the problem, I'm the one that's not doing my job, whatever. I know it's hard, but guys, they're in trouble. You're the manager now, it's your bar. No, it's us, it's our bar. You guys are gonna Tara's do... got our back, Alyssa's got our back, Hunter's got our back. Let's do it for all of us. Let me show you what the epitome of a bad decision is. Free beer, free beer today, come inside. I come home with you! Uh, I find you a very cheap sex! Who's gonna give the free sex? Us. We're not <laughs> giving free sex here. You said free sex to my wife, I'd belt you in a freaking mouth. You're looking at girls that you want to come in this business and you're saying free sex? Do you realize how up that is? I'm desperate. And you look it. I still think it's a good gimmick. Now, let me tell you what this is. These are Bevintel reports. What this company does is they come in here and they weigh every liquor bottle behind the bar. Then they look at your sales for the next night 
and they come back and they weigh the liquor bottles again. It has to do with how much we poured based upon how much we should have poured. Here are the statistics. Friday, you got a D from Bevintel. You guys gave away $960.76. Gets worse. Saturday, an F. Read this number. How much did they give away? $1,596.51. Thank you very much, girls. He's losing two to three thousand dollars a month here. And I just showed you two thousand dollars. That's not funny. Had you guys poured correctly, he would not have lost money last month. Those girls cost me my business. Those girls cost me my livelihood. This is amazingly stupid. I cannot believe you get $2,500 worth of drink for free. You betrayed me. That's $2,500 and that we can make all the difference between living and dying. How much did you give away? How much did you give away? How many away, free drinks Abby? did we pour for him that night? Last night we gave a lot of free alcohol. That was encouraged by Ami. We gave champagne, we gave shots, but we don't do it on our own. Ami, I watched you give away six bottles of champagne last night. If you think you're smarter than everyone in the room, you're not. Totally pissed. It's my money, my business, my life, and everything over here will go as I want. That's how I feel. One more. How are we doing? Well, not too well. My first impression of John Taffer, when he walked in, I knew it wasn't gonna be good. It's a bar short for barricade, guys. It's supposed to be what barricades the customer or the patron from the booze. What I find remarkable, by the way, about this is this bar moves. But right over here is a piece of wood that is mounted to the floor. So, Mr. Manager, with a 30 cent angle iron, and four screws. You could have mounted this. It has been mounted there. Look at this. You've been here 12 years. In 10 minutes, you could have done something about it, but you didn't. Next time I check, it's not my name on the sign. That's, That's also not my responsibility. Yourself. It is your responsibility if you care. Lana has to hold her employees accountable, and she doesn't have the courage to do it. She lets people walk on her. You're not only her, you yourself, but good. You act like we don't care. But the reason I'm still standing here right now is because I care. If I'm you more care, of, then act like it. I have to be empowered in order to make things happen. So that was what you just said to no. me, and I'm not going to accept it. Uh, you don't have to accept I it. I don't accept it. I'm not going to let you walk out of here tonight feeling good I care, because you shouldn't feel good. Are you proud of him for not caring enough to do something about it? Are you disappointed? Yes. Tell him so. Do you want to own this business, Lana? Do you want to be successful? Absolutely. Why can't you say it to him? I'm disappointed. And I know it wasn't intentional. I know we can fix it. I'll determine in the next 24 hours whether you care or not. That's the deal. Now do the work you should have done in the first place. You clean the frickin' bar. And I want that lobster tank gone. I've been saying the same for 10 plus years. Now she's listening, and I don't care. This interview's done. Just before you take off, are you, are you coming back tomorrow? And I told you the interview's over. Off. John, I'm watching you standing here talking to your friend in a white sweatshirt as he's sinking. Do you want to kiss your money goodbye or do you want to fight for it? Of course not. I don't want to fight for it. Is this the way you fight for it? No. So you're not fighting for it. Do something to help. Let me see what you got, okay? okay. Do it. Let's go. Move. Guys, my name is John Taffer. Quickly, oh, this is Brendan. Chef Brendan, he's going to watch you guys for a while, okay? <laughs> Have we tempted any of these ingredients over here? Yes. We need to be at 160. All this stuff that you've got over here, it's all too low temperature. You're going to poison somebody. What's going on? Just letting it fester to the heat. Did you bring this to a boil? Yes. Because I have cameras in here. Give it to me straight. No, I didn't. Nope. Okay, you need nope. to tempt it. You didn't. Oh, no, I didn't. Nope. Are you laughing? No. All right, I'm... Why are you smiling? Do you I think just, it's I'm funny to serve not... soup below temperature to somebody? No, no, it's not. Would you eat that soup below no, temperature? I didn't. 
look at me when I'm talking I... to you. Is it appropriate to serve something below temperature to a guest? Yo, Mr. Cook, stop what you're doing and dump that soup down the drain now. This should all be below 41, not one of it. 60 degrees on this. 60 degrees? 60 degrees. All the temps are off. Chicken, where are we at here? 50 degrees, that's poisoning somebody. It's, it's Nobody all... gets sick when I'm in a building. Never, ever. These are serious health violations. Do you Come understand? On, These are serious Please. health violations. You're going to shut this business down. No, f you. Quitter. No wonder why you're a failure. Can I talk to you for a minute? You want to talk to me? I'm here to train you with a professional chef and make your life better. And this is the way we're going to start? This can be a good experience for you. Are you going to throw it all away? Is that what you want to do? No, I don't want to do it. I don't want to throw it all away. I just don't like to be talked to like that. Well, I don't like that you serve food below temperature and get people sick. Is that fair? Wrong person. It's a great example for your son. How he's going to hear how his mom failed and then quit and drove away. Good example, mom. Good work. I got four days to undo what it took you three years to do. How much longer, Fran, until we're out of money and we close? There, there, there's nothing left. A second mortgage on the house? Yes. So you mortgage your, your house is on the line. Yeah. Your retirement is on the line. I went back to work. What you've done is you've taken what could be a gold mine and you turned it into some heavy metal concert venue, which is a niche market that you'll never make money off of. You know what the average age of an ASU student is? 22. $65 million a year those students are gonna spend on liquor. He took your bar and turned it into a concert venue. What happens if you don't have a band? We don't know. That's not a bar. What's your bar experience before this? I've worked in the restaurant industry since I was 16 years old. Did you work for a national chain? I did. And did they not clean? We had a cleaning crew. Bartenders didn't clean their workstations? Every night. Anthony has slacked off in the last year, and I have asked him 100 times if he would wipe the tables down in the booths for me. And he, no problem, Mom. He never does it. It's a battle against me, against me against this whole family. And it's been that way since day one. So you called Mary mom. Yes. What's your relationship? She's like a mother. He's like a father. Anthony's a management nightmare. So why is he here? I mean, you're running a charity, friend? I don't get this. One more chance and you're gone. We clear? Yes, sir. OK. Every decision you've made is wrong. You blew your parents' money. And you're not doing a damn thing about it. What does your brother do? I don't know. Does your brother clean the bathrooms? Nope. Does your brother bar back? Nope. Scott thinks he's above doing little petty tasks. He thinks for some reason the GM doesn't help out with little things like that. I'm disappointed. Tell him so. Look him in the eyes and tell him so. Maybe he needs to hear it. I'm disappointed. I love you. No. Every day there was something you could have done that you chose not to do. You could have helped. If you can't take it, then I have no chance the next four days of changing it. I can't look my mom in the face and my dad in the face and have them tell me that I'm a failure. If everyone's got a place to blame on me, then fine. Up, oh, Scott's driving away. He's leaving. He's left. 90% of all the businesses owned in America are owned by families. 60% of those businesses fail, specifically because of a family issue. How many customers, Zuzi, have seen this family drama and said, I'm out of here? A lot. Hundreds? Yes. I like to look at Yelp. This is what your customers say. The people here are degenerates. Couldn't pay me enough to come back here. CD, by far the worst bar I have ever been to. That's your reputation? When you got to pull your boobs out to sell shots. I've been doing this 30 years. This is an insult to anything I've ever learned. Good burger. Little burger and you printed that on a menu and the salty ass fries and the hot stripper sandwich you're saying that your food sucks what the hell's going on here people get insulted when they see it it's embarrassing how did you wind up in the kitchen Ron? No, i wound up with dying uh, offer me the job so have you ever cooked before but i've never had culinary or anything like that show i watched him take raw chicken in his hand 
put it in the deep fryer, then grabbed the handle of the fryer. As he was doing that, you walked in there and counted money on the same cutting board. This entire place was infected and cross-contaminated with raw chicken juice. There's actually customers that don't order from him. They know and they won't. Christina, uh-uh. I'm not going to let that go down. Let's just, let's not start pointing fingers. Wait a second. Now you're defending him. When your employees are looking at you and saying, Diane, there's a problem. And that's why we're failing. So, I got us two great experts to help me with this part. Come on in, guys. If there's anything that you need to say or you need to say, do it today. I would like to um, actually say something to your mind. Of course. First of all, I would like to apologize for my behavior last night because I normally don't come to this bar and have beers like that and, or drinks or run around acting crazy. What I'm not going to apologize for, though, is having a big heart. You guys sat there and watched John call me a failure when I would never allow that to anybody in this bar. Any of you. Dad, your people skills, they suck. My First of all, Mike, John jumps on me and puts me down. You didn't say all I said was you're too nice and you give everybody too many chances. Did you guys stand up to yeah. John? Somebody messes up, they gotta go. I let you guys all talk last night, now let me have my peace. No, you shut no. up now. You, no, I'm not before gonna you, shut up. Before you finish I listened talking, to everybody talk last Ryan. night and none of you people still stuck up for me and I take a bullet for all of you guys. You just read them all. And, and I've got to You know why? Because I was say just it. shocked that nobody stood up for me. You know what? Nobody in this bar has any balls. Let me give you some balls. Here's some balls, Susie. Get some balls. Here, I stuck up for you guys. Get some balls. Because you know what? Mike. I'm done with this. Mike. I can't talk to him right now. Oh, is he gone? I don't know. Michael is gone, and I can't even begin to rescue this bar. Hi, this is John Taffer. Click here to subscribe to Paramount Network on YouTube for more Bar Rescue.